Hello, and thank you for taking the time to watch our video and to learn more about the Vet Therapeutics and our clinical trial for Wilson disease known as Gateway. My name is Lori McKenna, and I work in patient advocacy for Vivette. I'm based in Boston, and I am part of the expanding team um, at Vivette. And with me is my colleague, Dr. Bernard Vinichu. He is our chief medical officer at Vivette, and he has been with our company since its inception nearly seven years ago. He will share some background on gene therapy and about our own clinical trial gateway and hopefully start answering questions that you are on your mind along the way. So here's a quick look at our agenda. Um, we'll provide an introduction to our company, a little bit about gene therapy and about our investigational therapy known as VTX801. And we'll talk about the meaningfulness of gene therapy specifically for Wilson disease. And of course, about our clinical trial. So here's a quick look at our team on the left. Um, we are based in France and we are an, a clinical stage biotechnology company. The people you see there are entirely devoted to making a difference in the lives of those with rare and inherited metabolic disorders with our lead program being for Wilson disease. And at this point, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Bernard. Thank you for this introduction, Laurie. So, um, about 30 years ago, I attended one of the first congresses of gene therapy. And at that time, we were wondering, is it going to work? Is it going to be efficacious? Is it going to be safe? What would be the long-term effect? I'm happy to say now, uh, as I said, about 30 years later, that many products have been approved for uh, treatment uh, of patients, uh, for treating rare disorders, uh, inherited disorders, or for cancers, um, and targeting the brain, the muscle, the skin, blood, the eye. So um, about 19 products have been approved so far, and I'm pretty sure that in the coming years there will be more products. Um, the, as you can see, the two products have been approved for hemophilia. That's of interest for us because they use a technology that is very similar to what we are using for Wilson disease. And they also targeted the liver. In this case, for hemophilia, they use the liver as a factory to produce the missing coagulation factor. And this was successful. Next slide. I also want to share with you some very recent uh, results that have been published in the New England Journal of Medicine, so on, on a liver disorder. It's called Kriglanaja, very rare, but it affects the liver, and, and these patients have a need a treatment for life to survive. And uh, patients have been treated now with gene therapy uh, a couple of years, or a few years ago, and um, this has been successful, and they were able to stop their standard of care treatments. The product has not been approved yet, but this is extremely encouraging for the future. And again, like for hemophilia, they use a technology that is very similar to what we are using for Wilson disease. Next slide. So as you know, in Wilson disease, the um, defect that is associated with the disorder is a defect in a corporate transporter called ATP7B. And it is ATP7B copper transporter naturally, normally acts in the liver to eliminate the excess copper. Uh, the, uh, if uh, this ATP7B copper transporter is not functioning properly, then copper accumulates in the liver and in the other organ, especially in the brain. And this leads to the symptoms that you know about the disorder. So the objective of gene therapy is to restore this function of copper transporter to allow for a proper elimination and, and regular elimination of excess copper from the body. Next slide. For that, we use what we call a vector. A vector is actually the empty shell of a virus, just the shell of it. We don't take the viral DNA so that uh, this is not infectious. And in this shell that we use as a shuttle, we introduce the gene of ATP7B, the corrective gene, and uh, and we use the, uh, the whole thing through this vector. We inject it intravenously in the patients. The vector is intended then to circulate into the bloodstream to reach the liver, the liver cells, and then to modify the liver cells so that they will then 
be able to um, restore uh, this uh, function of ATP7B that can eliminate the excess copper from the blood. If you want to learn more about gene therapy for Wilson disease, I invite you to scan the QR code on the right-hand side of the slide. This is a very nice, there is a very nice video produced the American Society of Cell and Gene Therapy that really explain what it is. Next slide. So this whole program of VTX at one, that's the name of the product that we're using. This whole program is based upon previous experiments, as you can imagine, especially experiments in uh, in animals and, and in mice, where we demonstrated the, the activity and the efficacy of the product. We use a slightly different version of the of the shell that so that it can really work in mice, but otherwise the the core, let's say the, the DNA piece is identical to what we're using in humans. And and uh, what we did is the following: we used a very small amount of radioactive copper that is not dangerous to the mouse. And, and we injected it into the blood of the mice. So what you see on the screen uh, is some kind of an X-ray. You see the, the, the whole mouse. And, and what you can visualize is the radioactive copper as this uh, light blue signal in the liver. Uh, naturally, uh, copper uh, uh, will go into the liver and then will be eliminated below, as you can see, in the intestine. This is this blue signal and this is the normal pattern that we should observe. Now, if we look in the, to the second mouse, uh, which is untreated, after the injection of radio copper, we see that there is a strong signal in the liver. Uh, it's in red, and there is no signal in this testing showing that copper uh, becomes uh, is has been trapped into the liver. This is absolutely abnormal, and what we want to restore is uh, the picture on the left. So what we did next is that we treated, and on, on this uh, picture we show four different mice we, uh, with Wilson disease, and we treated them with increasing amounts of bdx one And what you see is that progressively with increasing um, doses uh, of bdx one then the signal in the liver is less and less uh, intense, meaning there is less and less copper that stays in the liver and more copper that goes into the intestine and with the highest dose actually we observe a complete uh, restoration of the normal pattern that we were wanting to observe. Uh, next slide. I'm not going to show you all the experiments, of course, that we um, uh, performed, but another one is very important. We looked at survival. So what we did simply we treated some mice with vtx one and others were not treated and we observed them. And after 40, 40, 44 weeks of age, we started to see the untreated mice die and the other ones were not in a good shape. Um, by, by one year, 60% of them were dead. And on the other hand, those mice that had been treated with vtx one were surviving and were perfectly healthy. Next slide. So, now, what is the uh, ultimate goal of gene therapy? We want to restore the elimination of excess copper from the body because it's toxic. That's what we just discussed. And this should allow us eventually to withdraw the stand of care treatment with a scalar or zinc treatment um, and also to interrupt the low copper diet. We want to prevent the disease complication and hopefully improve existing symptoms, including neurological symptoms. At the end of the day, what we want, the ultimate objective is to improve the quality, the life of those patients, of those people living with Wilson disease. On the other hand, what gene therapy is not expected to do is to restore the function of dead neurons. If neurons, are, uh, tissues and neurons are dead, then it's unlikely that gene therapy will improve that. So this means that in the future, we'll need also to, to intervene as early as possible. Next slide. So let me uh, update you briefly on where we are with Gateway. You know, this is an ongoing uh, clinical trial. This is the first one with VTX01. And the objective of the trial are first, as is always the case, to ensure uh, to uh, evaluate the safety of the products. And also we want to collect some preliminary efficacy of a single administration of BTX-01. Um, the second important objective is to determine what will be the optimal dose to, to use in a larger trial. 
Let me now briefly talk about the, the visits. Um, during the first three months, and there will be what we call an intense monitoring of the patients, so frequent visits to ensure both safety, but also to maximize the chances of success of the therapy. We feel this is very important. After three months um, uh, post-injection of BTXL1, we should be able to determine whether the patients, we are able to determine whether the patients are responsive to the treatment, responders, yes or no. And if the patient, if a given patient is a responder, then we withdraw the standard of care treatments and we continue the observation of the patients. If the patient is not a responder, then we let the patient under their standard of care treatment. Um, during the, uh, afterwards, we will progressively decrease the number of visits. And uh, during uh, year two, there will be four visits and, and then during year three, four, and five, there will be two visits per year, which is comparable to standard of care management. So far in the trial, uh, we haven't, uh, there has been no serious adverse event that has been reported after injection of UTXL1, and the enrollment uh, continues. Next slide. So, uh, this is very briefly the trial. There will be about 16 patients uh, that should be enrolled at the end. Uh, the key enrollment criteria, there are many more, of course, but the patient needs to have the Wilson to be an adult between 18 and 65 years of age. And the patient needs to have been treated on the standard of care for at least a year. And the total duration, as I mentioned, is five years. Next slide. Initially, we had six sites across the US and Europe, and uh, we have expanded that to 10 sites, 10 clinical sites to make it easier for the patients so that they are closer to the sites. And it's uh, certainly much more convenient now for, for uh, the, the, the visits. The lead investigator is Professor Michael Shisky uh, from Yale in, in New Haven. Um, in the U.S., we have another five sites with Fred Askarin in Michigan, Valentina Medici in, uh, um, in California, Regino Gonzalez in Florida, Willie in Southwestern in, in Dallas, and uh, Sean Rudnick in, um, in North Carolina. In Europe, we have five sites, Thomas Sandal in Denmark, Ulrich Lauer and Hartmut Schmidt in Germany, and Aftab Ala in London in the U.K. Next slide. So thank you very much, Bernard. Um, we're almost at the end of our presentation. This is our last slide. Um, please know how much we appreciate what an important and personal decision it is to participate in any clinical trial. Um, and as Bernard said, we are doing our best to take away some of the stress that comes with that decision. We have added more clinical trial sites and um, we have a team devoted to answering your questions um, your very personal and, and specific questions along your journey. And for those who are eligible, there is assistance with travel and study related expenses available. So I encourage you to um, scan the QR code on the left of the screen and to learn more about our study. So thank you very much, um, especially to the Wilson Disease Association for providing us with this opportunity today. And thank you for taking the time with us today. Thank Thanks you. so much.